Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, I'm Logan Radio Rocks. You're not, and this is another edition of Tuck Your Chin. I am here with none other than Dr. Black, a.k.a. PJ Black, a.k.a. Uh, Dare Wolf, a.k.a. I mean, seriously, you got a lot of names. Got a lot of names, a.k.a. Cape Town Werewolf, FKA Justin Gabriel. I think uh, that was my WWE name. Most people know me as Justin Gabriel, but he only existed for like seven years. I've been PJ Black for 20 years. You've been PJ Black, you know, your whole entire life. Pretty much. Now, you told me earlier, and, and people don't know this, but you broke into wrestling in 1997. What is the biggest difference between when you broke into wrestling and the business that it is today? Oh, wow, that's a good question. No one asked that, but it's completely different. Wrestling, like, evolves every couple of years, and if you can evolve with it, you can make a pretty decent living out of it. But coming back to your question, it was so different back then, man. It was, uh, was kind of like a... A secret club. It was very yeah. hard to get in. Now you can just go sign up at a school and start right? wrestling. Like back in the day, you had to like know somebody to get in. You have to like you had to do certain things in front of the commission. You had to do. I mean, now we talked about this earlier. I learned how to protect myself in a boxing ring, and those are some of the things that you had to do back in the day. You had to find somebody to teach you. What? How did you get into it? Like if, going from hey, I want to be a wrestler to I am a wrestler. What was that process like? So my dad was a pro wrestler. So when I was eight years old, I was like, this is what I'll probably do. Um, but it was uh, when I was 11 years old, my dad was working a show and they needed a referee for the show. And I was, I was 11 years old. So they threw me in there. And he's like, you can count to three. You can count to 10. Just, you know, the rules. You've been watching this shit your whole life. <laughs> so I got in there. And once you see how the magic is done, I yeah. was hooked. I was like, this is everything I do, right? I'm an athlete. I've been playing rugby since I was seven years old. I did Muay Thai, kickboxing, a little bit of theater. So this is a mixture of everything. My, my dad actually called it a stuntman's ballet. And that just stuck with oh, me. And, it is. And, and this is what I wanted to do. And it takes two still doing it. It takes two to tango. Look, if your exactly. partner isn't being as uh, great as you are in that match, guess what? Oh, 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 right? Yeah. It takes three to tango in wrestling because you got the referee. The referee is. Make very important. Well, the referee is so important. Very the referee important. dictates so much. Match time, uh, flow, all of that stuff. When, you're, it, when your finishes come, stuff, all of that. The referee, no one really talks about the referees, but they are such an important very. factor in wrestling. Mm -hmm. They're the only person with an ear to the back room. Don't be giving away any secrets now. <laughs> no, well, I, I think I, everyone knows. Everybody's everyone knows. educated everybody. now, yeah, right? That's true, that's true. I mean, and that, that's another way it's evolved, right? Uh, people yes. respect and appreciate it from a different angle, you know? Like, instead of trying to figure out, like, wait, is this real or not? Like, are, we, are they blurring the lines? It's more like an appreciate, like it's an art form. It, it is really an art form. An well, art form. it's entertainment, but but Inter really, it's athletic Inter entertainment at its best, isn't it? It's, it's storytelling. Storytelling. It's exactly mm. storytelling. But we're still trying to blur that line, right? Like I, right. I, I like to do something and, and look at a kid in the crowd, and he, he looks at his dad and is like, "Dad, was that real?" Like that's what I like to do. Like yes. blur that line. Like, is it real? Is it not real? That's how I know I did my job really well. Exactly. And going to that, look, there's nothing worse than a zero sound from an, uh, from a crowd. You want to you wanna pop, you want to boo, you want a hiss, anything. You want something. So for you, which is better, heel or baby? Oh, I like playing the bad guy. Yes. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a pretty decent guy in real life, I like to think. I don't know, but so I like to uh, talk shit on the mic, uh, yell at it's people. So it's, it's so much more fun, isn't it, to be a heel? Fun. It's because you get that emotion out of people. It's so much easier, especially these days, to angry people and get like, because everyone's offended by something. Yeah, but we don't have to get shot. Back right. in the day, oh, yeah. they got, Bobby Heenan got shot at. Oh. Jim Cornette got shot at. I've been at shows where people got shot. My dad shot a guy in the shoulder. <laughs> I've been at a show where a guy got stabbed. Uh, I got, I, I saw this heel, <laughs> he made the crowd so angry that they all threw chairs in the ring. Yo! Just felt like this. You remember the little rubber stoppers on the bottom of chairs? Yep, yep. 5,000 people in North Atterboro, Massachusetts, 19 years old, they start throwing those wow. rubber stoppers at me. I had to be police escorted to a car at 19 years old because grown adults are threatening my life. <laughs> I did my job awesome that day, and yep. I felt really it good about it. Good, right? Does it, yep, right? Yep, oh, my God, I got exactly. so much hate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Look. Such a, weird, such a weird industry, but. It, right? If you go out and no one makes a peep, that's worst. the that's worst, worst day. day. <laughs> worst day of your life. Right? Worst day of your life, yeah. right? Yep. All right. Last question, and then I'm going to let you go. Right. It's called Tuck Your Chin. Give me an example of a time that you forgot to tuck your chin, and how did that work out for you? 
wow, I gotta think. It happens about to all of us. Yeah, but I'm, I gotta think really hard because I've been I've been taking bumps since I was seven years old. So it's n I've never really been hurt in wrestling, which is so weird. Like I I've, I've been hurt motocross, base mm -hmm. jumping, flying my wingsuit into yeah, trees. Yeah, so you, you're like conservative in in what you do as an athlete. Yeah, I mean I just or, or I'm just really good at it. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've never. I gotta think real hard about that, but I mean, it does happen. Accidents it happen does. all the time. I've had a couple of concussions. I tore my bicep actually. Well, you, can tell. you can tell, but it still looks good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I uh, but now. is your best side on the other side? Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably the only thing that happened in wrestling. All my other plates and surgeries happen outside of the ring. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, you do get hurt. Like, I've had quite a few concussions for sure. And remember, seriously, don't fall on your ass 